We have for your entertainment this evening that celebrated Italian drama, Orlando's Revenge. Oh. And we're privileged to have in the leading role that famous tragedian, Milton Scroop. Oh. Fresh from his triumphs at Covent Garden and the Haymarket, Mr. Milton Scroop will play Prince Orlando. Miss Lucy Bracegirdle will play his faithless wife, Lucretia. I myself will play old Lorenzo, and my wife, Esme Nugent, will play my daughter, Beatrice. Oh. Daughter? Your wife's an old trout. <laughs> Even so, she will play Beatrice. <laughs> Mr. Phillips, who has never appeared on any stage before, will play the perfidious Leopold. In conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, it merely remains for me to tell you that the piece that we put before you this evening is so moving, is so poignant, that it will require all all your attention, all your finer feelings, all your emotions, for we plumb the depths of passion at the well of despair. Oh. Is there a hornpipe? <laughs> no, of course there isn't a hornpipe. Uh. Ah, there was no hornpipe advertised. I like a hornpipe. <laughs> there is no hornpipe. There were no hornpipes in old Tuscany. I only asked. Well, don't. Oi! <laughs> are any clowns? No, of course there aren't any clowns. When Orlando discovers the faithlessness of his wife, his great heart breaks and he exacts a terrible revenge. Oh, oh ladies and gentlemen, if you have tears to shed, prepare to shed them now. It's not a comedy, then? <laughs> no, of course it isn't a comedy. It's a tragedy. It's a tragedy when the squire gets here. He's expected a comedy. <laughs> Well, then he will be disappointed. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Mr. Milton Scroop. Stretch forward, Milton Scroop salutes you. I'm here this evening against medical advice to perform the most taxing role in my repertoire, the part of Prince Orlando, in which I dredge up the very dregs of horror, of monstrosities undreamt of, of diabolical inventions never seen before on the stage. <laughs> I shall be assisted in my performance by Mr. Phillips, a sensitive and gifted young man who has never appeared professionally before and craves your indulgence. <laughs> you are too free with your apple cores and orange peel, my man. And what are you doing in a gentleman's box? I reserved it for my master. Then it is a pity that the box is not free and you more reserved. <laughs> <laughs> You will die for that! Oh, oh, oh. Screw, Mr. remember your audience. <laughs> they grow restive. Ah. Then let us return to the Palace of Florence. Night! The Prince Orlando cannot sleep. He awakes to find his young bride has stolen from their bed. His noble nature is racked with jealousy as he walks the terraces. Oh. <laughs> Roderick, have we got a shilling for this poor fellow? See, he can barely stand. I believe he's an actor, Father. What? Oh, greetings, Thespian. When does the play begin? It has started. What? You mean you're acting right now? Oh, I thought it was the windy spasms. <laughs> I do apologize. Are you the comic turn? Certainly not. This is a tragedy. A tragedy? Well, I didn't know that. 
Well, will you kindly get to your seats? Certainly, certainly. Oh. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I must, I must apologize for this interruption. I shall need a few moments to compose myself, and then I shall continue. <laughs> Have they been round with the hot pies yet? Uh, no, sir, no. Then we have missed nothing. But it's a tragedy, Father. Well, never mind, Roderick. We'll provide them with a few laughs. Uh, oh, have you brought the rotten veg? Uh, yes, sir, yes. And the fruit. <laughs> <laughs> Good. You shouldn't miss from oh. here. And I've got, I've got the raspberry blower oh. and the whistle. Oh, that was <laughs> splendid. We could cause a riot with these. Yeah. <laughs> Do you remember last year, Grunge, when the theatre burned down? Oh, what a night. He comes. Oh, oh. Oh, 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 oh. oh, Aunt's blood is off again. <coughs> what? Who goes there? Come forth. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that? Oh, that? That's Mr. Phillips, sir. It's his first time on any stage. Oh, well, we must give him every chance. Let me have more light. Speak, I say. It is I, Leopold. <laughs> well, those tights are a mistake. <laughs> yes, more cod than peace, if you ask me, Robert. Ah, it is you, Leopold. By this drawn sword, sire. Ah, I am much beset by troubles, Leopold. I see danger in every shadow. <laughs> <laughs> what is the clock? Almost dawn, for I have heard the cock that is the trumpet of the morn doth with lofty, shrill-sounding throat awake the god of day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, why do you disturb my watch, sire? I am much troubled. For tonight, my wife Lucretia has stolen from my bed oh. and walks upon the turrets. I, I have seen her. She sleeps as she walks and doth have discourse with her dead father. Oh, father! You look pale, my lord. I, I feel my flesh creep at the thought, and my hair doth prickle like the quills of a thousand <laughs> porcupines <laughs> that stand up on their end. <laughs> Her father but three months dead, and she married with indecent haste. A, a beast would have mourned longer. <laughs> it is a sorry business. <laughs> oh, see, she walks distracted upon the terrace. Uh, would you approach her? No, I will not rest her untimely for her sleep, for I may affright her. I am so deformed and unfinished, sent forth before my time into the world, half made up, that even dogs do bark at my shadow. <laughs> hey boy, hey boy. <laughs> Lucretia? <laughs> no, she can't. My lord. <laughs> oh, gentlemen, please. I implore you, pray allow the play to continue. <laughs> Your servant, ma'am. Oh. Oh. Get oh. rid of this scoundrel. Oh. Monsters, have you no feelings? How dare you mock and ridicule this sacred oh, manuscript? Many more interruptions, and you'll have our swords to reckon with. Mm. Pray continue, ma. Mm -hmm. Oh, Leopold, does he suspect? Uh, no, I told him you talked with your dead father, and he blanched with fear. Then come, one more kiss. For see, the rich hue of day brings forth a guilty blush to the pale cheek of dawn. I don't like him, Roger. Nor I, Father. But it is his first time on any stage. And his last. <laughs> <laughs> Flowers for the fair. A small token in appreciation of, oh, a consummate performance. But I hardly spoke a word. But those I heard were as mellifluous as the music of a flute. But they hissed and booed and pelted us with fruit. Well, they may have hissed and booed and pelted you with fruit, but they didn't burn the theatre down. <laughs> I think they liked you. They're a very discerning audience. <laughs> discerning? Mm. Poor Mr Phillips will never act again, and we have two more performances. And there we have the weakness. As fine a boy as ever pulled on tights, but totally unsuited to his chosen profession. You know something of acting. 
I too have worshipped at the Temple of Thespis. <laughs> Perhaps we could discuss the play further at your lodgings. For see, the morn in russet mantle clad walks all the dew of yon far eastward hill. Ah, oh, you know the bard. My constant companion, ma'am. <laughs> What's thou begun? Tis not yet morn. Twas the nightingale and not the lark that pierced the fearful hollow of thine ear. I knew it an instant rapport. If you need a replacement, I'm at your service. Oh, but it's too late. What? Henry Nugent has already secured the services of a local player from university. University? You mean a fringe player? An alternative performer? <laughs> now, that is a great mistake, for they are prone to lewdness and vulgarity and are violently unpredictable. Who is this upstart? Ah, Lucy. May I, may I introduce our new Leopold? It is almost dawn. For I have heard the cock that is the trumpet of the morn doth with lofty, shrill-sounding throat awake the god of day! <laughs> Roderick! Hello, father! <laughs> How do you feel, sir? Yeah, nervous, Grunge, but at the same time excited, for in a few moments I shall be holding that divine creature in my arms. It's just the words that worry me. What about the words? I can't remember them. <laughs> I've been rehearsing all day and I still can't recall the lines. Oh, don't worry! Most actors can't. Just extemporise. <laughs> Make it up as you go along. And if that fails, do what Brown of Drury Lane always used to do when his memory proved treacherous. He used, he used a peculiar laugh that always put the audience in a good humour and gave him time to think. A peculiar laugh. <laughs> yeah, that's very good, yeah. <laughs> yes, but then there's Milton Scroop. He growls and prowls and roars and foams like a tiger in a cage. I never know which side he's meant to be, and he keeps up a perpetual snarling and grumbling. I never know when he's finished. He's just trying to make you look bad. He, se he seeks to upstage you. You could spend half the night with your back to the audience. Not with these looks, Grunge. <laughs> you seem to know a great deal about acting. Well, I was with the, um, Stretchford players until that night they threw us all in the canal. Then give me some advice. Well, all I can say, sir, is this. Speak the speech, I pray you, trippingly, off the tongue. Don't mouth it, as many players do, nor saw the air too much with your hands, but use all gently. Be not too tame either. Let discretion be your tutor. Suit the action to the words and the words to the action. Your object is, first and last, to hold, as twere, a mirror up to nature. That's brilliant, Grant. <laughs> it's nothing, sir. <laughs> a mirror up to nature. How does he think of these things? I know his head's exceptionally large, but it contains so much. I've come to wish you well and to warn you. Warn me? The dalliance on the couch during rehearsals. <laughs> yes? <laughs> They've put a clock on it. It has spread 25 minutes. <laughs> what with your caresses, your embraces and your fierce kisses, I can hardly get a word in. And another thing. I don't think kissing in the French manner will go down well in Stretchford. <laughs> it could arouse strong feelings. It certainly does in me, Lucy. And that's another thing. Your hands. My hands? They're everywhere. I was almost out of my shift at the dress. <laughs> I know you wanted me to play the scene in the news. Only but... if the part called for it, Lucy. As long as it wasn't gratuitous and could be played with sincerity, I thought it would give it more reality. <laughs> There's too much reality, Roderick. Milton Scroop is jealous. Is he indeed? And what's it got to do with that stuffed, overblown ham? He's my husband. <laughs> what? Oh, Lucy Bracegirdle is my stage name. Really? Oh. Well, it's only acting, isn't it? I hope he remembers that when it comes to the whipping scene. Whipping scene? Well, there's nothing here about a whipping scene. It, it just says he strikes me. With a whip? He uses a whip and does some lashing, flaying and scourging. What? Well, that's before the eye gouging. What eye gouging? There's no mention of eye gouging. Oh, I think he wished to surprise you. He does it with two black grapes which he holds up on the ends of his thumbs. It is quite an effect on the audience. Only... Sometimes he does get carried away. <laughs> Two black grapes. 
Suppose he doesn't bother with the grapes. Nervous, right? Yeah, you have a, a little fun. Ah. You're not angry with me? Angry with you? Of course not. Good. Then you won't hiss me. Hiss you? My own son? Yes. Of course I won't hiss you. Oh. <laughs> Unless you're terrible. What? Well, Roderick, if I have the right to applaud a good performance, surely I have the right to hiss a bad one. But I'm your son. And I'm sure you'll be very good. Unless you get stage fright. Stage fright? Yes, you know, the nerves, the sweating palms, the tightness in the throat so you can hardly swallow. Is it really worth it, Roderick, for a quick grapple with Lucy Bracegirdle? My feelings for Lucy Bracegirdle are honourable. Mm. She secretly married to Milton Scroop. Oh, is she really? Well, that should bring a certain reality to the performance. Still, if you change your mind, I'll be standing by in doublet and hose. Are you sure you can get into them? Yes. <laughs> you wait until you get out there. You won't be able to remember your own name. I can deal with it. Roderick, a melon has a better memory than you have. I won't listen to any more of this. I shall wait in the... wings. <laughs> <laughs> all the world's a stage. And all the men and women, merely players, they have... Uh, oh. I just came to wish our young protégé good luck. He's waiting in the wings. He can't wait to get started. I've never seen such eagerness. Ah, good. He also said he was surprised that men get paid for doing this. He quite happily do it for nothing. And why is that? Look to your wife's group. My wife? For it is the hot day that brings forth the adder that craves for weary walking. What are you trying to say? You are an actor. You play the character for the working day and then you remove it with the makeup. Now, that rogue plays himself. He feels things. <laughs> and he's feeling a great deal at the moment. <laughs> what? You see those embraces? If they carry on like this, they'll set fire to the scenery. <laughs> Look to your wife, Scroop. Love me, Leopold. <laughs> <laughs> you mean you love me as surely as the evening tide draws towards the wanton moon. <laughs> How your words thrill me. But what if the prince, my husband, were to discover us? <laughs> <laughs> We may speak privily. Tell me, would you... <laughs> tell me, wouldst thou go forth today? <laughs> uh, you are unwell. Perhaps it is for the best. For who knows? Who, know... <laughs> who knows? An arrow, fleet as mercury, may rest its mark upon your person. Tell me, my lord, how does my lord the prince fare today? <laughs> <laughs> You mean he's low in spirits and sickly uh, with a pale mm, cast of mm. thought? Uh, they say. They say, <laughs> they say that he is jealous of his young bride. Speak true, for your life depends upon it. Does she favor you? <laughs> ah, it is true, then you are doomed. For here comes the prince. <laughs> Leopold, come close. <laughs> and uh, did you sleep well this night, my lord? <laughs> you did? <laughs> and uh, did you see my wife? And does she favor you? <laughs> you liar. Or did she not come between your adulterous sheets to mock her marriage vows with sporty play? And did you not... <laughs> and did you not stain my honor? What? Innocent, you say, spotless of this crime. Then, what have we here? Oh. I call you traitor, rogue, and cur. 
despoiler of mine honor and murderer of the king, her father. And for these crimes, you must die. Seize him! No, no, no. Yes. Look, Grant, we're splendid, uh, sir. You count Leopold to the light. Uh, now, what about makeup? Very convincing. Well, I'm not wearing any. <laughs> well, it must, must be the claret, sir, and it brings the colour up. Well, uh, good luck, Father. Uh, no hard feelings, Roderick. Certainly not. The show must go yeah, on, Father. I mean, I've no idea who started that hissing. Well, whoever he was, he probably did me a favour. At least I missed the retribution scene. <laughs> well, I'm glad you've decided. <laughs> what retribution scene? Where Orlando takes his revenge. Revenge? That's what the play's called, Orlando's Revenge. I know what the play's called. It just says here, seized and carried away. That's afterwards. After what? The whipping. <laughs> and the flaying. <laughs> and the gouging. Yeah. The gouging? Mm. He's supposed to do it with two black grapes. Holds them up on the end of his thumbs. Brings the house down. And that's if he uses grapes. Mm. What do you mean? Nothing. Only he sometimes gets carried away. There was that uh, incident in Dublin. What incident in Dublin? During a sword fight, he laid on too hard. Well, no one will know who substituted a real sword. It was a tragic end to the career of Braceby Hastings. Mm. They say his head finished up in the third row of the stalls. <laughs> I see. I think this calls for a little rewriting, gentlemen. Come close. <laughs> Where's Leopold? <laughs> Leopold! Oh, odds blood, I needed that. <laughs> have you seen my wife and does she favour you? Oh, does a dog have fleas? <laughs> what? For that young beauty would rouse the passion in a bay gelding. <laughs> what? <laughs> I oh. call you traitor, rogue, and cur, despoiler of mine honour. Seize him! Stay! I have not despoiled your honour, Prince Orlando. You have none. You are not married. Lucretia is not your wife. Oh. Hmm? What? Come forth, bogus friar, and tell the truth. <laughs> I, I am Friar Grunge, an unfrocked priest who married this unhappy pair on the instructions of Count Leopold, who says Orlando is a double-dyed villain. <gasps> what are you talking about? Which indeed he is, for he has murdered your dead father, Lucretia. Of course I haven't! False Purchase Road, I have a witness. Roderick the Page. <laughs> I am Roderick, the page! <laughs> Tis true, whilst your father slept within his orchard, I saw this rogue... I saw this rogue pour from a phial a deadly draught into the royal ear. It was this foul-toothed serpent that laid our good king low. Then seize him and start the gouging! <laughs> Thank you.